I'm Steve Wilkerson, and I'm with Jim Saunders, executive editor of the News Service of Florida. Jim, the State Teachers Union, the FEA, and the Florida School Board Association filed jointly a lawsuit challenging the corporate credit uh, tax scholarship program, which has become very popular with uh, uh, students and their parents uh, who are from lower economic uh, income status, families, because it provides them an opportunity to go to uh, alternatives to public schools. And um, that program was recently expanded in the last session of the legislature significantly. And I guess one question I have for you is the program's been around for at least 10 years, maybe a little longer in my memory. Why challenge it now? Why not earlier? Well, the, the, um, the, the teachers union and there's, there's several groups that are involved in this lawsuit. But um, they are saying that, you know, the program has expanded so much over the years that it's sort of reached a critical mass, I guess, and, uh, you know, that that's what led to the challenge at this point. Um, there are somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think it's like 67,000 kids in this program at this point. That's a lot. Um, it's, it's incrementally grown over the years. Uh, and uh, like you said, there was a there was another expansion uh, approved during this legislative session. It was a pretty controversial issue, and uh, basically they expanded eligibility. So the union, which is you know, I mean, the union uh, has been fighting vouchers for at least since at least 1998, because that's when Jeb Bush got elected, and that was an issue during that race. Uh, Jeb Bush, uh, you know, he came in with a what. I think is considered a little bit more of a pure vouchers program in the sense that it would it sent uh, tax dollars to private schools Just general revenue to, right? out of the state budget to uh, private schools to uh, to educate uh, you know children in these uh, but uh, that was overturned by the Florida Supreme Court several years ago and um, this tax credit scholarship program has sort of become a, a replacement for it it, it it's, uh, it's sort of an inter interesting how it works. Uh, basically, uh, corporations make uh, contributions to what they call tax uh, funding, scholarship funding organizations, and then they can get tax credits for the state from the state for those contributions. So the money isn't actually being paid directly out of the state budget, uh, but they do get tax credits uh, for their contributions. So, um, you know, this has been a, this has really been a, in some ways it's an education holy war for the last, you know, literally since 1998. And uh, this is sort of the latest chapter in it. Um, again, you know, the, the union and these other groups say that it's just grown to the point where they thought they had to challenge it. I'm not personally sure what's different legally now versus when, it, when the program was, was being built up over the years. Maybe they're just afraid that it's getting bigger and it's a time to stand and fight. What are the grounds of the suit? There, there is a, they're using a, uh, a primary argument is what they used to defeat Governor Bush's original voucher program, which is there's a, there's a provision in the state constitution that talks about uh, a, a paramount duty of the state to adequately provide for a system of free public schools. That's my, you know, my interpretation of it. But um, the um, so um, the Supreme Court struck down, you know, Governor Bush's original program uh, on that basis that it vi basically violated this this uh, you know responsibility f to provide for free public schools as opposed to sending money to private schools. So that's a, that's a major part of their suit. They're also raising issues about whether it's constitutional to uh, send money to, to religious schools. Uh, a lot of this tax credit scholarship program, uh, you know, the private schools that are, that are providing the education, uh, a lot of them are, are religiously affiliated. I mean, there may be Catholic schools, you know, those sorts of schools. So, um, you know, there is that issue. That issue was never really resolved in the, uh, the the challenge to Governor Bush's original voucher program. So it's a little bit out there. The Supreme Court never got to it because they said that, you know, it was unconstitutional for this other reason. Is there any thought that perhaps there was political motivation involved in the timing of the filing of this suit, that it's being filed in the midst of a very contentious governor's race? Well, you know, it's, it's a little bit hard to tell. I mean, as I said, on the 
on the face of their arguments, the, the union's arguments and these other groups, is that it's just grown to such a level they think they have to do something about it. But I don't think there's any, any you know, question that uh, Charlie Chris, the Democratic nominee, is supported heavily by the teachers' union uh, and will be supported heavily through the fall by the teachers' union. And uh, Governor Scott is more in line with the, you know, the other side of this issue, the pro uh, voucher, you know, school choice side of things. He's has been since he's been in office. He signed the bill that expanded it this year. One other thing to keep in mind is that there was another lawsuit filed about this expansion earlier this summer by the union, um, and it's it's more narrow. It's not as um, it, it 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 involves the, the fact that this was a very controversial issue during the legislative session, and really the only way it got passed was to put it in with a broader education bill. I mean, it's a very wide-ranging education bill. And the union argues in this earlier lawsuit that that expansion is, is unconstitutional because of, uh, you know, it, you can't, they call it log rolling, mm -hmm. but basically it means you can't lump together a bunch of sort of related or unrelated issues into one bill. Uh, so there are two lawsuits now challenging this program, one the expansion and one sort of a broader challenge to the program. Well, it seems also, uh, I guess in a related way, uh, that education is turning out to be a very central issue in the governor's race. Maybe it always is in Florida, but especially right now. Um, what's going on there? I mean, it, it, you know, G Governor Scott seems to be talking about it a lot. Uh, Tell us about what's going on there and why maybe it's it, it is such a big issue. Well, I think you know I think I keep in mind first off that polls generally show that people are education is one of the top concerns of people in Florida. So I think that's probably part of it. Um, you know, the the Democrats are going to hammer Scott heavily on education issues, and um, they always do. I mean, that's a Democratic issue. So the governor seems to have tried to get out front or at least play de defense. I'm not sure which it is at this point. But, uh, you know, he rolled out a proposal a week or two ago that basically to increase funding for public schools to a level where uh, per student funding would be at an all-time high. One other sort of, you know, part of the game here is that when Charlie Crist was governor back in, uh, I believe it was 07, that's when the state had the highest level per student funding ever. So Scott's trying to trump him, you know. And uh, after 07, the levels went down because the economy plummeted and the state budget, they had to make a bunch of budget cuts. So, you know, that's part of the game here. Uh, but Governor Scott also has rolled out some ideas like reviewing the state's standardized tests. You know, that's that's something that, that uh, particularly Tea Party sorts of conservatives you know, they don't like some of these, uh, you know, what they consider to be top-down testing. Uh, we've seen that in Lee County. There's been a controversy down there. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's becoming, uh, you know, becoming more of a prominent issue in the campaign. I mean, let's face it. A lot of this, uh, you know, a lot of this campaign is going to be about who can attract some independent voters to the, to the you know, to their side. And um, I think education is one of those issues that probably both sides look at and say, you know, we got parents, we got grandparents, we got people who are worried, we got business people who are worried about the quality of the education system. Can we make an inroads with those people?